Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Verse 34 and verse 35. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The king's favor is towards a wise servant but his wrath is against him that causes shame those two bible verses again they are proverbs that you think are very unconnected but they are very very connected But before I will begin to look at what that verse 34 and 35 has to say concerning where we are presently and what we are pleading the Holy Spirit to do in our midst now, I would like to follow it up with yet another scripture so that when we take it all together we will be praying and praying properly in the book of Joshua 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 chapter 7 Joshua chapter 7 verse 5 and the men of Ai smote of them about 30 and 6 men for they chased them from before the gate even unto Shebarim and smote them in the going down Whereof, I mean, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes, and he fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening. He and the elders of Israel, and they put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought these people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us? Would to God we had been content 
and dwelt on the other side, Jonah. O oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turned their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it. And they shall environ us round and cut off our name from the earth. And what will thou do unto thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, go away from here. Wherefore liest thou thus upon your face? Israel had sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and, dis and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the accursed from among you. Up! Sanctify the people and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou cannot stand before your enemies until you take away they are costing him from among you. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord takes shall come according to the families thereof, and the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households, and the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. And it shall be that he that is taken with him with the accosting shall be burnt with fire. He and all that he has because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he has wrought fully in Israel. Let's stop there. We are talking about God committing unto faithful men his precious things. And we are concerned about a divine visitation over the church of God in Nigeria. And we are bothered about the calamities that are befalling us. We are bothered why evil men continue to rule us. We are concerned. Why, as many as we are, we have not wrought deliverance in our nation. We are concerned. Why, with all our elaborateness, we have not wrought righteousness on the earth. Why, as corruption, they fight all that we are about? We are concerned why our young people are being slaughtered and being carried away. We are concerned how many of our brothers have turned their back and they are on the run because of the enemy. We cannot keep quiet. We cannot pretend as if we are not in Nigeria 
as we see the defiant move of the spirit of the born woman and the spirit of sin ravaging his church. Many, many are asking questions. Does God answer prayer? Several are bothered and confused. Others have gone back. Some have compromised. Some have denied the faith already. Some have changed whatever they believed. We cannot pretend that we are not in serious problem. We cannot. Those of us that come from the south, maybe southwest, maybe you may be insulated, not, I mean, not thinking that we are in problem. But up to the time I'm talking now, except on the road that seem to be peaceful when you are going from here to Taraba. But if you branch into the villages, people are still being killed. Though we are talking of Boko Haram in the northeast, they are silently operating around Wukari, Donga, all those places. People are being slaughtered. They have sacked people from their lands, from their villages, from their farms. Nobody seemed to cry about it. Complete denominations have been dismantled. The EYN, our brethren in the, in the north, their very headquarters, Mubi, was overrun completely. The leaders are in distress. We cannot claim ignorance that we are in a very difficult situation now. But at the beginning of the year, when we were about entering this year, God said that Nigeria is about going through labor pains of rebirth. But there is no birth that does not include bleeding, that we shall bleed. We didn't know that the magnitude of our bleeding is going to be like this. We didn't know that confederacy had been made against God's people to wipe them out. Though some of us may sit comfortably in our little corner thinking that it's not near us, please be careful. When we thought, oh yes, we are facing the Northeast and they started dealing with local governments by local governments and everything was happening, all of us are thinking like that until Kogi State. Different lands are being struck. And it's like we are going to be rounded up. But you see, the matter for us this morning that God is demanding, call upon me in the time of trouble, I will answer you.
there are few issues that must inform our prayer because you see we are praying we are still going to invest hours of prayer because the children have come to the place of birth and there is no strength to deliver them when we began to look up to men we look up to our government and say government should do something maybe they have done their best in situation in which we find ourselves what is our option can God not turn our story around Eh? Right. But there are questions that God is demanding that we will deal with. But we don't want to deal with it theoretically. We want to deal with it prayerfully. We want to deal with it intelligently. We want to deal with it practically from among ourselves. If it will please the Lord to visit us according to his promises. Before we come to read the Proverbs, which are the two arrow scriptures that we are going to carry to God in the place of prayer, we decided to read Joshua just to see an illustration of what happens when the people of God have been defeated from inside, it is internal defeat that gives way to external molestation. If God's people are not dismantled inside, nobody can tackle them from outside. If there is no matter that cuts our source short from inside, no man can prevail to cut God's people short. If God be for us, what's the Bible saying? Who? can be against us. When Joshua began to cry, I want you to see his cry. Because in his cry, there are some theological propositions that I thought we need to take note of as we go to God in prayer today. Look at how Joshua began to cry. I want to pick the words of his prayer because he was making a case before God and I wish we can follow that deliberately. Don't worry about how they did it in verse 6. That will not be our consideration in terms of they put dust on their head and all of that. That's not what I'm dealing with now. I'm dealing with the case erased. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord! Alas, O Lord God! Wherefore, as thou at all brought these people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan oh Lord what shall I say when Israel turns their backs before their enemies. 
What, do, what, what shall I say? Do you know what Joshua was talking about here? Joshua remembered that all the years that he had followed Moses and the executed battles, there was never one that the children of Israel did what? Turn their back to start running from their enemies. And when you go into spiritual warfare, the weapons of our warfare, in Ephesians chapter 6, if you read, you will notice that there was provision for helmet on our head. There was a breastplate for our chest. There was a shield of faith that you used to wade off the fiery darts of the enemy. There was the shoe to wear the gospel of peace. There was the belt of truth to bind your waist with so that you can maintain stability. And there is the sword of the spirit in your hand for the offensive attack. But when you look at everything God provided, there was nothing for the back. There was no protection for the back. Why? Because God never expects his people to do what? To turn their back to their enemy. There was no protection for their back. God cannot allow his children to suffer defeat. So he never provided. God does not have plan B. There is no plan B in case the enemy overrun them. So in Ephesians chapter 6, God said, having done all, do what? Stand. When you have fought and fought and fought, stand. You cannot run. You cannot turn your back. Stand. So when Joshua said, Lord, what will I say? When Israel turns their backs and they began to run from their enemies. Why? How will I explain that? The Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear it all. And they shall environ us. You know the meaning of that? They shall surround us. They will trap us inside and cut off our name from the earth. And what will thou do unto your great name? You see, as I'm looking at what Joshua is crying about, and when you listen to what was being said, as people are boasting, their plan was to wipe off Christianity. Their plan was to wipe off the church and anything that is connected with it. Their plan was to make sure all those that are standing and saying they are fighting for the word of God, they are cut off. And if they ever exist, they are subjugated never to lift up their voice. Wait for me. This is not the first time it was done. So, you cannot be sitting here and say, well, 
it cannot happen. Be very careful. Egypt and the north of Africa, they were Christian dominated before. Actually, the first bishop, when the word of God began to break out, the man they call Athanasius, he was an African from North Africa. The Nicene Creed that we always quote in our Anglican churches and our uh, Orthodox congregations, they were all crafted based on the leadership that came from the north of Africa. Few years down the line, what was predominant became a minority. And it's as if Christ has never been preached in those lands before. Christ was actually first preached there. Ephesus. You all know Ephesus. At least from the book of Ephesians. Abby? Ephesus, where great work was done. As we are talking today, Ephesus is complete Islamized. Didn't the spirit of Islam come 600 years after the church had been established? Eh? Talk to me, please. Islam didn't come out until 600 years after Jesus Christ had died and risen and the church had been moving with miracles. How could somebody that, something that came 600 years after, how is it becoming a threat to everywhere? It is that spirit, it's a wild spirit, and it has vowed that it will leave no stone unturned. The entire Quran was written to counteract the Bible. And there are several principles they have picked, which was originally the biblical principles that we have omitted. Some of what they practice that is giving them penetration everywhere was the principles that Jesus Christ taught and left us with, which the church has abandoned. But because the prayer this morning is not yet on the spirit of Islam, we are going to take a different hey, warfare on that because we must engage it. It is the trouble in Europe. United Kingdom is in trouble with that spirit. France, they are under siege. Then to talk less of all the other areas we are yearning in Syria and all of those places. And I sense God is saying, I have left this remnant of the Philistines to train you in the art of warfare. We will deal with that when we come to that segment of our prayer body. But this morning, the cry of Joshua. He cried and said, Oh God, 
And what will you do to your great name? When he finished with all this cry, the answer the Lord gave him was very, very surprising to me. The Lord said to Joshua, Get you up! Get you up! Go away from here! If he was kneeling down like this, what are you doing here? What are you doing? Are shaking your head? What are you talking to me about? Did you see the question? Wherefore liest thou dust upon your face? Why are you lying down here? And in that again, I have a very critical fear in my heart. What was that? That as long as we refuse to deal with the question of sin, sin in the heart, sin in the house, sin in the family, sin in the church. Listen to me. It is not the sin of the nations that is a problem to God. After all, they are sinners. It is the sin of God's people that weakens all that God could have done by their hands. It is the sin, the unconfessed sin, the buried sin, the manipulated sin, The sin that you thought you are clever about, that you did not confess, is what brings you to reproach and reduces what God can release into your life in any place. And I feel that, I, I, you know, when we left here yesterday night, and I continue to ask God, Lord, have mercy on us. And he said clearly, not, not unto dogs. Not unto the swine. I was sensing that could we kneel down here and be praying and be praying and all that God was going to do is to kick us in the hand and say, get out from here! You know what you need to do. You are not doing it. Why do you fill my altar with tears? When you have not done what you ought to do. Why are you lying therefore like this on your face? Why? Israel has sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them for they have taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and disembled also and they have put it even among their own stuff for this reason verse 12 therefore look at the therefore in that bible passage the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. And for this reason, neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the accursed thing from among you. Brothers, I don't know whether you are seeing the way the Bible is reading. Are you seeing how the Bible is putting it? Let me start by reading it again so that you can see. 
after this brother had said, Oh Lord, why? What has happened? Why are you doing this? Why are you leaving us? Look at how God addressed in verse 10. What did he say? What did he say in verse 10? Get you up! Why are you lying like this on your face? When he finished stating the issue, Israel have sinned. They have transgressed my covenant. They have even taken their costing. They have also stolen. And they have dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. For this reason, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroyed their accursing from among you. Up! Stand up! Sanctify the people. And say, sanctify yourself against tomorrow, for thus says the Lord God of Israel. There's an accosting in the midst of you. O Israel, thou cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accosting from among you. Now, so can I note with you that prayer will not be answered while sin is not dealt with. Serious revival will not come if we brush around sin. The mighty move for which we are looking for what is to be brought forth cannot be brought forth if we are gentle with sin and with sinfulness. The power will not fall why we remain swine in our swallow. Ceremonies, big, 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 big sacrifices, mighty programs will not help us unless God will bring us to the place of genuine and deliberate repentance. And I felt this morning we will deal with it the way the Holy Spirit is asking so that we can go further. So that we can honestly go further. I don't want you to start by criticizing that other pastor, that other preacher, that, no, that's, leave that first. God will bring us to that. But I'd like us to search. And please don't be religious. Don't stand out there and say, Lord, I'm not like them. You know there's a problem here. When God was going to announce to Joshua, I said, Israel have sinned. Can I ask you, is it all Israel that went to Jericho to collect their costing? Who did? Just one man called Achan. And yet, how did God say? How many have sinned? Israel have sinned. Whatever it is, that makes it there. It doesn't concern me. It doesn't concern me. You are not serious. Even your attitude. When you see a Christian brother misbehaving and you look away, already makes you a partaker of that sin. Do you know that? In the days of Phinehas, the 
children of Israel were sleeping with the daughters of Moab. And the, the, the anger of God broke loose over them. And a plague started. 24,000 people were dying in one day. The only thing that could stop that plague was not prayer. What stopped that plague? Who remember what stopped that plague? When another young man was coming with a girl and they were moving like this as if no problem. Look at that young Eliezer. What did he do? He carried a javelin. He ran after the man, he ran after the woman, and he gunned them down. Until their stomach came out. And when he did, God said, what Phinehas has done has removed my anger. Listen. If there is going to be revival, some of us must be violent against sin. Not just the sin in the market. The sin where? In the church, in our house. Gone are those days. When you say, well, let me just practice my faith in my corner, I want to inform you. All the atrocities that sin will bring upon us, it will come upon us all. To know that a pastor is living in immorality, but you are still paying tithes to him, you are a partaker of his sin. When we go to raise people who hate sin with passion, God said, Get up! See what God decided to do. There is an accosting among you. And this is the reason you cannot stand before your enemies. This is why it appears as if the power of God is lost in the midst of his people. Do you know that even why some of our churches are being burnt? Majority of us whose churches are not yet affected, we didn't show concern. We didn't go around there and say, excuse. So where will the brethren be sleeping now? What food will they be eating now? We carry on our program as if nothing is wrong. But if a mosque was burnt, how long does it take to rebuild it? Talk to me. In a few days, two weeks, and they will build a better one. That spirit of denominationalism is a sin. You are going to rise and fight it. It's the spirit of selfishness. The devil knew that he can appeal to our selfish greeds 
and break our ranks. There's an accosting among you. This is why you will not be able to stand against your enemies and you will not be able to stand before them until you take away the accosting from among you. So in the morning, you will, therefore you shall be brought according to your tribes. Now I want you to see how elaborate they were to deal with sin. Can you imagine how God said in the morning? You will come tribe by tribe. The tribe of Reuben, the tribe of Simeon, Levi, the tribe of Judah, Issachar, Dan, Naphtali, Manasseh, Ephraim, Benjamin, All your tribes, you come tribe by tribe. What are they coming for? They are coming for clearance. If we will do a good job in praying today, shall we not come for clearance? Shall we not stand before God one by one and say, Lord, what about me? Is there any wicked way in me that I have covered or that I have carelessly pushed under the carpet that your eyes have seen and will not allow us to prevail in the day of battle like this? You will come tribe by tribe. And it shall come to pass that the tribe which the Lord takes shall come according to the families thereof. So when they take a tribe, then all the families within that tribe, they will start coming. They will start coming. They will start coming. I don't know how long it took. But such was the elaborateness with which God wanted to deal with the accosting. Some of you will be wondering, don't you think God knew who did it? Eh? Why didn't he just, by the word of knowledge, for somebody to stand up and say, Eka! Stand up! Do you know what God was doing? God was training the people the fear of God and how to hate iniquity. All of them suffered defeat for the sin of one man. All of them stopped their businesses in order to trace where the sin lies. All of them with fear and trembling. They came before God. Lord, search me. Search me, O God. And as the families gathered, he said, the family with the Lord shall take, shall come household by household. Did you see how elaborate it was? And the household which the Lord shall take. How will they come? Eh? Man by man. Man by man. Man by man. Imagine that God was only tracing sin. And the millions of Israel had to come and pass through this. Why is sin so serious? Is because sin is the only weapon that can dismantle the purpose of God. One of the prayers I've been praying this morning is that even if you are not committing sin, may God strike you with the fear of God 
that will make you hate iniquity with passion. That you will have zero tolerance for iniquity. And that anyone who so practices iniquity, you will, you will, you will have no tolerance for him. Such that he will not be able to sit in the congregation of the righteous. And the Bible said, when they did, and the family of Judah was taken, And when they brought every household in that family and they picked the household of Zabdi. Zabdi was like the head, the clan head. So they started checking man by man. And the household of Achan, the son of Kami, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. See how they traced him. They traced him to his father, to his grandfather, to his great grandfather. And Joshua brought him out and said, My son, I pray you give glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession unto him. Tell me now what thou hast done. Don't hide it. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. Thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment. I want you to see what he did. He did not kill a man. What did he do? Talk to me. He only took a Babylonish garment. He said he saw a Babylonish garment, 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, then I coveted them. And I took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth, in the midst of my tent. And the silver is under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran unto the tent. And behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. They took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen, his asses, his sheep, his tent and all that he had. And they brought them to the valley of Akko. Why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. And all these stress stoned them with stones and burned them with fires. After they had stoned them with stones, they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. Brothers, I'm going back now to our prayer points. Please. We are asked in the dispensation of Joshua. There was no atonement for sin. 
except death. God does not tolerate sin unless death has occurred. And I found that some of us, we don't understand the grace that brings forgiveness. That's why we think it is so cheap. Do you know that for God to overlook sin, death has to occur and God wanting to deliver us but he cannot contradict himself he needed an atonement that will make it justifiable for him to overlook sin and it will not be less than the death of Jesus and the shedding of his precious blood do you know what the Bible says that when a man had been washed and he went back to sin, what is he doing? He is crucifying Jesus the second time. And he is doing despite to the blood of the Lamb. And he is despising the spirit of grace. The misunderstanding that has come upon us that made us to tolerate sin. It's as if the grace of God is a license that even if you sin, it doesn't matter. And so you are misbehaving and bringing the hosts of God's people into trouble. And someone will say, how does the little thing I do, how does it affect people? Let's not over-exaggerate something. How does Babylonish garment, a job, Babylonish garment, and the things that that man picked, that he could actually bury in his tent, how could that affect 12 tribes of Israel? How could that affect millions you are the one that thinks sin is measured in its power by size. Sin, no matter how tiny it is, the power of sin is that it is an assault against God. Every sin is a transgression against God. Sometimes when we, when we have preached about sin and some of you just came out, you know, casually and say, yes, I repented, I repented. And you went back because you thought it's so cheap to deal with sin. Can you imagine when Jesus came into the house of Zacchaeus and said, today salvation enters your house. I was wondering how Zacchaeus could not sit down again and said, everything I have collected, I'm going to return it, how? How many times? Fourfold. Now, you know, I was watching a message we preached some 10 years ago. And I said, ah, so this was exactly what Zacchaeus did. Zacchaeus quickly went back home. He saw the television that he confiscated from, uh, from somebody at customs. He impounded that television and said, take it to my house. I like that one. When Jesus met him, he saw that this television, <laughs> I must return it fourfold. He saw the curtain there was this beautiful material that he saw impounded at customs and used it to do cutting in his house. When he went home, he said, this cutting also is not mine. And as he began to roll it, the house became bare. And when he remembered all the people he, he collected money from and he needed to pay it four times, he began to draw checks from his account. 
until his account went red. Then he went from house to house, going to apologize to those he actually despitefully used. People said, something has happened to Zacchaeus. That was the new repentance. Do we need a serious revival? Talk to me. Do we want to see the power of God at work again? Huh? Will you like to be part of that generation that God could use to turn Nigeria around? Okay. If you want, we've got to beseech God this morning. We've got to pray with all our strength. We've got to pray man by man, family by family, household by household. To say, Lord, spare your people. Deliver us from this challenge that has come upon our lives. It was exciting to me when I discovered that Second Chronicles that we normally quote in chapter 7. Please read Second Chronicles. And that chapter 7, that's okay now. Second Chronicles 7. Are you there? Eh? Please, are you there? In verse 13, if I shut up heaven, that there have been no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, who are the people to call on God's name? Eh? Talk to me, please. Are we the only Nigerians? Let's talk. Are we the only Nigerians? Are there not other people that are misbehaving? But look at what God is waiting for to act. If my people, which are called by my name, shall do what? Humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. If they shall humble themselves, I realize that it takes humility to actually seek God's face, to actually look inside and to say, Lord, now that it is the time you want to commit things into our hands, is there any other issue? Have I, even though I'm not directly involved in something, but I have not rebuked those who are doing it. I was afraid of losing their friendship. So I kept away the truth. I didn't want persecution, so I looked the other way. I didn't want to be misunderstood, so I decided to ignore what is going on. All those who allow sin to thrive around them, they are partakers thereof. All those who have pleasure, in those who are misbehaving, they are also partakers of their misbehaviors. We are crying to God. I sense that we should cry to God deliberately that Nigeria must not go down the drain. Our brothers that went into politics, and those that carry the name 
Have they represented the word of God properly? Is the Babylonish garment not on them? Have we not from among ourselves sold our above right? So that passage we finally read says righteousness does what? It is righteousness that will advance a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. And we must be saying to God today, we have a need for you to visit us. But why this prayer is, is, is big, is colossal, is uh, serious, it has a beginning. Don't wait until your sin will fish you out. Don't wait to destroy us all before you will be open. Look at what Achan did and the whole of his family. They brought his daughters. They were stoning the daughter. And can I inform you that this girl did not know that their father even buried anything in the, in the tent. And as they were stoning the girl, the girl was looking at their dad. He said, Daddy, Daddy. I wonder how Eka must have done. As they were landing stone on his wife, the woman said, my husband, who will wear this Babylonish garment that you brought? Now we are going to die for what we don't know. Or could it be that when they were digging the tent, the madam said, what is that? He said, keep your mouth shut. And she kept quiet. If she had cried and said, no, not in my house. Maybe the matter would have been limited to Eka. Are you beginning to eat certain food that your husband mysteriously brought? You know that his salary could not have got this kind of thing, or you are using it. You are a partaker. Say me, I don't know, but uh, you know, when my husband said, sin is a reproach to any people. For then the verse 35 that I've ask you to add, says, the king's favor is towards a wise servant. But his wrath is against him that causes shame. If anything we do cause shame to the name of the Lord, do you think he will be so happy as to come and give you a pat on the back? We're going to invest the next moment of prayer and what we just want to do is just to pray but in this prayer which will lead us to be alone with God after we have prayed I want to ask you please we at a crucial position I have come to recognize that, yes, many, many problems in our nation because those who carry light, they put it under. We are not ready to, to stand for that truth until we are killed.
but why we're going to take the matter of the church national church in the different nations church in a globally can we not pray with ourselves can we not check what personal damage we ourselves have experienced because our attitude to standing for righteousness is weak would you like to join us in prayer and let's make a concerted concerted cry to God we are praying we are praying today if we are fasting and waiting on God let it not be in vain let the Lord purge our hearts let him reveal to us our emptiness let him lead us in those parts of life where all the righteous go let him come as fire let him purge our hearts like sacrificial flame let our whole soul become an offering to our redeemer's name I will request now that you will take a good position of prayer I know the space is very tight but it's okay just take a place of prayer if it is convenient for you to stand, fine. If you think you can kneel down, go on your knees. If you think sitting down is the best place in which you can cry to God, go ahead. But we would like to pray. And the first prayer is that that reproach that sin brings to any man, don't let it follow me from here. We have come to a critical point. Uh, I will be telling you later on the fact that God is turning his attention to us as a critical group of people that he wants to take into confidence. And if God is going to spark a revival that will restore righteousness, it must begin with us. Do you believe it should begin with us? Eh? Let's pray. While we are calling on God, the things that had been in your own private life that you swept under the corner, bring it out. Though. The things that you should have opened up that could have brought victory, not only to yourself, but to the entire household where you belong including your fellowship or your church or the work to which God has called you bring it out be definite with it as we pray together now let's go to pray take any position of prayer you like please pray if you want to stand it's okay if you want to walk about it's okay. If you want to lie down before God, it's okay. If you want to kneel down, please, it's okay. But please, get to the matter. Get to the root of the issues. Lord, Lord, don't first look at someone else. Let's look at ourselves. Lord, what are the omissions? What are the things I thought would not matter? What are the imperceptible omissions that is now bringing difficulty onto the ministry under your hand? That is bringing challenge even to your own house? What are the things that you ought to have opened up but you kept it? Many things are getting spoiled. Challenges is coming as if God doesn't answer prayer again. But God who answers prayer is still here. Please pray. We are praying. 
we need to pray. Did you support somebody to do evil? Were you a partaker of a wickedness? Was your contribution that arrangement to make sure that it was not discovered? If it is before men that we are standing, it will have been easier. But before God, with whom we have to deal, who is saying, take away this from my presence. Extract this so that I can go on with you. Have you harbored a root of bitterness that has brought defilement to the, to, the, to the family of God? And we are standing before God here. We are waiting on God that God will visit us. And God is saying, what are you doing here? Thank you. Take your position of prayer. Keep praying. Let's pray like David says, Search me, O God, and try my heart today. Because the heart is deceitful, is slippery. Sometimes you thought you know it. Now while you are going to be praying today, be, de be deliberate. Just tell God what it is that is happening. David said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. I want you to undertake this prayer on several levels. Are you the head of a, of a family? You are involved in something. Your wife is not aware, but you are bringing a damage upon your family, your wife and your children. How can you hide it? You have to step out and bring it before God and say, God, don't because of me close the door of favor to my children. Don't because of me block the channels of what my children could have become. Please pray. Call on God for yourself now. Let Brother Shitu please come and stand with us here. Brother Shitu, please come over.
when the Holy Spirit began to speak that it is time for an outpouring. It is time for God to visit this land. Let it not be that it is that thing under your own tent that is going to turn the eyes of the Almighty God away from these thousands and thousands of people. Please call on God. God is asking us to wait on him to pray. Keep praying. The Holy Spirit may be just coming around you person by person and God is reminding you something. Don't hide. Just pray. There is going to be pardon. There is going to be mercy. There is going to be forgiveness. But only when we have uncovered it. Thank you dear brother, dear sister. Take your time. You are praying. When it is time for us to respond to God, don't harden your own heart. Maybe you are one of our leaders. There's a weight on your heart because of an unconfessed misbehavior. There's a matter that has jeopardized the extent to which God wants you to go. Because there's a matter you have hidden. It's under your tent. Wherever you are standing to pray, please let's pray on. Now lift up your voice to God and say, Lord, spare us, O God. Let mercy prevail, O God. Look at things that we should have rebuked, that we kept quiet about. Lord, have mercy on us. Look at something we could have stood against. We kept passive. As if we have endorsed sin, we have endorsed carelessness. It is time for God to visit us. Please, Lord, have mercy upon us.